<coughs> so we will start working with arrays and loops. Okay. So first of all, we're going to learn how to manage arrays, how to work with arrays, and then how to um, work with arrays in iterating through all the items in that array. And we will learn why this is important. So first of all, uh, what's an array? Array, remember, is a data type that we have in JavaScript. And the way we represent these data types is by using the square brackets. These square brackets represent the initial of the array and the end of the array. So everything inside those square brackets is part of the array. So of course, uh, uh, two square brackets that are tied together is like an empty array. So basically a list that doesn't have any element. So empty list, right? Something like this. So we can assign that value to an array and a, a variable. Now, if we want to create an array with elements inside, let's say a list of names, then we can put the square bracket to, to represent the array, and then we can put all the elements inside. Now, every element is separated by a comma, right? And it could be of any data type. It could be strings, it could be numbers, it could be booleans. It can be other strings or it could be objects, right? So any data type that we know that we can use in JavaScript, you can use as a value in an array, okay? So we can create arrays with a certain number of elements already inside, right? So we can create empty arrays, we can create arrays with data already inside, and this Data could be of any type. Let's say we want to create an array of uh, numbers. Um, right? Now, it's not limited to one data type. We can have an array with different data types inside. Okay, So arrays are not limited in the sense that you can put any uh, data type inside that array. Questions so far? No? OK, so we have an array. Now, how do we access? Right? How do we add elements to the array? How do we access the elements of the array? And how do we remove elements from the array? Right? Because we want to maintain this array with data. But sometimes that data uh, has to increase, sometimes have to be reduced, or sometimes have to be modified. Right? So let's think about selecting elements from the array. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. Now, if we want to get a particular element of from the array, we have to use the index notation. And the index notation is something like this. If we have an array of names, we can say names add 0. This add that I'm speaking is basically the notation. It's square bracket, position, square bracket. The position is always specified as a number, right? An integer number, starting from zero. That means that if I try to, well, in this case, this will be what? What do you think will be names at zero based on that array that we had there? John. John, exactly. So that will be John. OK? Now, <laughs> as I said, the index right, or the position should be a value as a number, an integer number. That means that if we try to do this, what do you think we will get? Sorry? Sorry? Uh, it's not an error, sadly. <laughs> it's an undefined value. It's nothing in 1.2. It's 
values at 0, 1, 2, 3, but nothing in the decimal places, right? So that would be an error. Not an error, it's just undefined, right? It will not fail. Now, that's the other issue. Now, what if we do this, names at 10? What do we get? Now, notice here that the index is bigger than the array. This array has three elements, so technically the positions of the items are 0, 1, and 2, right? At 0, we have John. At position 1, we have Mary. At position 2, we have Adam. If we say, OK, give me the names at index 10, what do you think we will get? Undefined, exactly. Undefined. OK? In all their programming languages, this will be an overflow error, because we're trying to access something that is not in the range of the, of the array. In JavaScript, we don't. It's just undefined. There is nothing there, right? The same way, well, if you try to do any negative number, that will be undefined. So the only values are between 0 and the, the length of the array. Okay, now I said length of the array. Every array has one property called length, and we already used length in the last uh, project, right? And this property that we can access by using dot length, there is a lot of functionality that we can access using that dot uh, on an array. We will we'll learn some of those later, but this particular property will give me the length of the array. How many items or how many elements do we have in this array? So in this case, what do you think it will be? Three, exactly. Okay? Cool. In the case of numbers, for example, if I do dot length, that will be four. Numbers has four. Now if I do empty list dot length, how much that will be? Zero, exactly. So the length will give me how many elements in that array. If it's an empty array, it's zero. If it's an array that has three values, then you will have three. Great, so question. Knowing these two things, and let's say I have this array, the, the John, the names array. And I will add one more element here. OK. Now, I need to get, for whatever this array is, I want to get the last element of the last name in this array. What is the expression that I need to use? Names add, right? Names add. So square bracket. Names dot length. It's dynamic, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Length. Programmatically, yeah, minus one. So this is always the last element of the array. Why minus one? Because remember, the index start, or the positions start at zero. So that means that in this array, this element is zero. This element is, oops, so 0, this element is 1, this element is 2, and this element is 3. So names.length will give you 4, and when you subtract 1 for the position at 0, then you have the last element in the array. Okay? Now, one other thing that we need to learn about array is when we assign or we want to modify an element in the array. And the way to do it is by using the same index notation, right? So we can use the position that we want to assign, and we can do an, an assignment. So in this case, I will put John, uh, no, let's change the name, Charles. Now, you're probably thinking, well, two things. First of all, cons. Didn't all the cons variables were like constant and they cannot be modified? Technically, yes. But the thing that you cannot modify is that if you try to do names equals and a new array, 
that will fail, right? Because I'm trying to replace the whole variable with a different value, right? So that will fail. This will fail. Why? Because it's a cons. We cannot reassign a cons variable. But in an array, we can redefine or reassign the elements inside the array, even if it's a cons. Okay? So in this case, this is the syntax that we use. We can say names at this position, and we assign the new value. Right? Questions? So now our array will be Charles, Mary, Adam, and Jane. We can get the value using the index notation, or we can reassign the value using the index notation. OK? Questions? No? Got it. OK, so what do you think it will happen if I do this? Uh. <laughs> exactly. And that's really, that's really <laughs> dumb. <laughs> A bunch of undefined, and then you will put, yeah, exactly. So in this case, even if the array is four elements, right? By the way, if we try to get names at 10, this will be undefined, right? Because there is nothing after the, after the fourth element. Now, when we say names at 10, then our array will become something like this. It will be, well, Charles, because we already changed that value, right? Oops. And then it will be undefined, undefined, undefined. Let me see if I have more space here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. Eight, mm, nine, and in ten, I will put Wilbur. So it will convert my array from an array of four elements to an array of 11 elements, right? Because the zero is one more. So if I do dot len right after here, I will, I will get 11. That's the new size or the length of the array, even if I have a bunch of undefined in, the, in between. Yes? So in theory, if, OK, let me ask you this one. If you put names 4, you can change that undefined to a name? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can say names at 4 equals, uh, I don't know. Uh, And now the fourth element will be changed to that name. So this is a way to make um, make um, an array grow, right? You can just set the index that you want, and that 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 works. Now this is the kind of like the worst way to make an an array grow, right? But why? It's because if we by mistake do something like this, what do you think it will happen? We'll basically create a bunch of, we will take a lot of memory with no purpose, mm -hmm. right? Uh, some JavaScript will uh, figure out this and optimize it, but still not the best way to go. Especially because if you try to loop into this array, now you have a million elements in the array. It's no longer three, four elements, right? So that's an issue. So now we know how to get the size of the array. We know how to get a particular element in the array, and we know how to change that particular element. Now, how do we modify the array? So two things that we can do with arrays. And the arrays are a very good data structure for this. Let me put a the same names array. Let's start with an empty array. And I want to add elements to this array, but in a way, that they are always add to the end of the array, right? And for that, we do this. 
names.push. So we use the push function. By the way, there is a lot of functions that arrays have. Of course, we will not learn them all because that's part of the documentation. That's part of your, your daily, uh, your, you, you have to go ahead and, and search the documentation for those. I will probably teach you the most common. So push is one of those. So with push, we can add elements of the, to the array. So now arrays, the array will be something like this. It will always add to the end of the array, right? If we do names of push, and then we add another name, now it will be like this. So push adds to the end of the array. And you can find the documentation for, for push. Just Google G JavaScript array push. You will see the documentation there. So push adds to the bottom. What if I want to add to the beginning of the array? For that, we have a function called shift. So shift is a function, it's called Adam. And this function, similar to push, instead of adding to the end of the array, it will add to the front of the array. So now my array will be Adam, John, So that's shift. So push, shift. I'm adding elements to the array. Now, if I want to remove elements from the array, I have two functions. Of course, one to remove from the end and one to remove from the beginning. And those are pop. and on chief. Now notice, notice one thing, is these functions pop and on chief, they return, so they remove the element from the end from pop and from the beginning from on chief, but they return the element. So you can put it in a variable. Right, so that's why I put it in the variable. So last will be the last element of the array, and first will be the first element of the array. Now this value gets removed from the array, right? So after I do this names dot poop or pop, no poop, it's pop. <laughs> I got it wrong there. The array will look like this. It will be Adam and John because I removed the one from the from the from the last. And last will be what? Mary. Mary, exactly. Now when I do first names on chief, I will have I will remove from the front, so my array will have John. And first will be what? If I have this array and I do names.onChief, it's removing from the front of the array and storing that in the variable first, Adam. Exactly. I'm removing the first element of the array, in this case, Adam. And now my array is just a string with John. Now, what would be Oops, what, what will be names.length here? One, right? Just one element. Questions? Chief, on chief from the beginning. Push, pop from the end. Okay? Now, these names are essentially matching some data, data structures that we use in computer. And one is the stack. 
probably hear this uh, the stack. Uh, you probably seen the when you go to a, I don't know to some office, you know, government office, and hopefully not anymore. But they put they have your your application in a stack, right? Technically, they should take from the bottom of the stack, right? But what if they when you put your your application, they take it from the top? That's a that's a, that's what we call the stack. It's first in, last out, right? Because the first one that get that gets in the stack is the last that gets out of the stack, right? So, but think about it. Is this is like a push pop thing? That's what a stack is. You start pushing, 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 and when you start pop, 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 you're worth removing, right? That's a stack. The other thing that you can do is a queue, right? When you get in line in a queue. Is you are adding with push, so you start adding with push, and then you do on shift from the bottom. So you are getting the first one is the, the first in is the first out. The first in is the first out, yeah. So these functions help you build this type of uh, structures. That's, just, that's what I'm saying. Uh, it's not that we, we use it very frequently in real life problems, so I don't worry much about them. Uh, cool. So we know how to create arrays, we know how to change arrays, we know how to add elements to the array, we know how to remove elements from the array, and we know the length of the array, okay? Now the other thing that we need to do with arrays is loop through arrays. So looping arrays. Loop means to iterate through all the elements of the array. So basically, if I have an array of names, right, and I want to, let's say, find, let's say I want to find if my name is, an, is, is in that array, I will have to check all the names in that array and just say, okay, is this my name? No. Is this my name? No. Is this my name? No. And when I find my name, I say, OK, this is my name, and do something about it, right? So iterating or looping is basically checking every element of the array and do something with that element. Let's put another example. What if I want to add all the numbers in an array, right? I have an array of numbers. Let's say I have an, an array of grades. And I want to find the average in that. Let's say I have an array. Um, I will assume that the, the grade is based on 100. So I have 100, 90, 76, 86. And then I have 99. And then I have another 100. And then I have a 65. Right? Those are my grades. And I have to find the average of that. How do I find the average of that? I have to add them all together and then you divide, it. divide it by how many are there, right? So first of all, I need to add them all together. So let's try to do that in a loop. So I will add the sum here. I will initialize it. Oh, sorry. I will initialize this with 0. And notice that I use a let because I want to modify this sum variable. And I will loop through all the grades, adding that grade to the sum. And at the end of the looping, once I get to the end of the array, sum, the variable, will have all the values added up, right? So for looping through an array, we use several ways. I will teach you some of them. The first way is to use for off. So you see that I'm using for the, the word for, and in parentheses, I'm putting a variable declaration, counts grade, of grades. Grades is the array that I want to loop, right? And this grade variable is the one that will have the value, right? Every value. Now, whatever I want to do with grade is fine. I can console log, right? 
or I can add it to sum. And at the end, sum will have the sum of all values in the grades array. Okay? The variable sum will have all the values added up. It starts with zero, and then I am iterating through all the elements. That means that every iteration in this loop will have will be grade will be 100 and then grade will be 90 and then grade will be 75 76 and then grade will be 86 99 155 that that's those are the values that the grade variable will get it will get all the values in the array and with that value i can print it in the terminal if i want to and in this case added to the sum. This expression is pretty common. Sum equals sum plus grade. So if sum starts with zero, in the first iteration, what is the value of grade? The first time this loop is running, what is the value of grade? The variable grade. The variable grade. Is it will be the first, 100, right? So and this expression is sum, that is zero, plus 100. That will be 100, right? And that's assigned to sum. So now sum is 100. Now, next iteration is 90. So now sum will be sum that is 100 plus 90 is 190. And then the next and the next and the next. So I'm adding all the numbers to the sum variable, right? Adding them all there. And at the end of this loop, once it gets to the end, the next instruction will be executed. So it will come here and say, OK, the average equals, how do, collect, how do calculate the average according to the formula? Um, you add them all together, and then you divide by both ends. So I already have the variable that have them all together. So then you divide that variable by both ends of the array. The grades dot length. And now I have the average. So notice that I have an array of values. I add them all using a loop, and then I divide it by the average, by the by sorry, by the length of the array to get the average. Right? This is pretty common in coding, right? Iterating through all the elements in the loop. Let's do another exercise of looping. Yes, question? No, no. Oh, so there you have one question. Okay, look, let's do one more. And for that, I we're going to use this same array. Let's, let's do another example. So what if I want to find what's the lowest grade, right? I can, I, I am assuming that this is a, a school management platform. I want to tell the use the, the student, hey, this is your lowest grade and this is your highest grade, right? I should be able to find which one is the lowest and which one is the highest. Let's try to find the lowest, right? So how do we, how do we, uh, how do we proceed with finding the lowest? We have to still iterate through all the elements, and somehow we have to compare that grade with something that it should be the lowest. If it's the lowest, then we keep that. If not, then we iterate to the next. Let's do it. So let's say let lowest equals, uh, let's do grades at zero. And then we iterate cons grade of grades. And we say if this grade is lower than the lowest, then this is the new lowest, right? So lowest equals grade. And move on to the next. Here, I can just print in the console, lowest grade is lowest. Okay? 
Now let's think about this uh, code. We have an array of grades, 100, 90, 76, 89, 99, 165, right? Now, I initialize a variable lowest with the first element of the array. This is a trick to avoid putting a value here, right? We say, okay, let's assume that this first value is the lowest. That's what we're doing here, just, uh, just saying, okay, the first one is the lowest. And then we are going through every element in that array, and we are saying, okay, is this element lower than the lowest that I already know? Now it's 100. The, for the first one, it's not, right? So nothing happens here. We go to the next. Is 90 lowest, smaller than 100? Yes, right? So now lowest is 90. And then we go to the next, and we say, is 76 lowest that lower than 90? Is yes. So now my lowest is 76. And we go, like for example here, is 86 lower than 76? No. We go to the next. Once we get to the all the a items, at the end, this is 65. And it will say, OK, is 65 lower than the lowest? Probably the lowest until that point was 76. It is. So now the lowest is 65. So at the end, I will have the lowest value. And it will be the lowest grade is 65. But notice that I iterate through all the elements, trying to find the one that is lowest. If we want to change this to be the Great, uh, great, great, wait, great, great, like that? Yeah. yeah, thank you. So I only have to change this a little bit, right? Change it here, change it here, and change it here. Now we have the greatest grade is Got it? And it doesn't matter if I have seven, seven grades or a million grades, right? It will iterate through all of them, and it will give me the, the smaller one. And that's what iterating or looping means, right? Now, we have a lot of options on how to iterate uh, on arrays. Uh, let me show you two more. So this is one of them. The, the syntax is for parentheses, then the variable, you can use cons or let, depending if you're going to reassign the variable, of array. Close the parentheses, close the brackets. Right? So this is the, this is the syntax for creating an array, sorry, a loop, that iterates through all the elements of the array. So this loop iterates through, I always, okay, this is one example. Now, there is another way to do a loop, to iterate through all the positions in the array. So the difference is in. So one is for off, the other is for in. OK? Very small difference, but very big change, because now, in this uh, iteration, position is the index. If I have an array of grades, like the one I have here, if I have this array of grades, and I iterate in the, the one on the left and the one on the right, what are the values that in the one in the left, LM, will get? What are the values? That variable lm in this iteration, what are the values that I will get? 
the actual numbers, right? 100, 90, 76, 86, 99, 165, right? Now, in the one on the right, I'm iterating through the positions. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? It's a different iteration. Now, this is a little bit more versatile because if you get the position, you can get the value, right? Because I have the position. So I can do this. Value equals, what is the array? Arrays add position. So with the one on the right, the four in, I get the positions. And with the position, I can get the, uh, the value. It depends on what you need, right? If you only need the values, four off. If you need the position and the value, use the four in. Correct? And these are two other ways to iterate through arrays. Now, there is a third way, and it's this, grades for each. And this is a function inside arrays. So all arrays come with this function for each. Not very easy to use, because the thing is that this function is something that we call, it's not a hall of fame, <laughs> it's higher order function. It's a high order function. A high order function in math or in computer science means a function where the parameter is another function, right? Seems a little bit complicated, but let me explain again. So the parameter for, for each is a function. We need to specify a function there. And that function, usually we write it as a narrow function has three parameters. One is the element, the second one is the position or the index, and the third is the array. Let me separate this a little bit so you can see where the function starts and when the parameter starts. So you see that for each is the function this is the parameter, right? It's a function, so remember, every time we call a function, we have to put parentheses for the parameters. So this is the opening parentheses, and this is the closing parentheses. Everything inside these parentheses is a function. You can see it there. What type of function is this? Arrow function, exactly. If we want to write this as a function expression, we can do this, function, same thing, right? But of course, arrow functions are preferred because it's simpler. But this is the where the signature, or when you have a function, the parameters that you expect, this is the signature of the function, right? So this function has three elements, three parameters. Element, position, array. And this function will be executed for every element of the array with these three parameters, the element, the position, and the array. So if I have, if I want to convert, let's say I have the names, the grades, sorry. Let's say I have the grades. And I want to add all the values of the grades on the, va on the variable sum. I can do this here, sum equals sum plus element. Because this function will be executed with every, with every value. So for example, it will be executed with the values 100, 0, and the full array, right? So 100 is the value, 0 is the position, Zero is the position, and the full array is the full array, right? And then it will be executed for 90, 1, the whole array. And then for 76, 
to the whole array, right? We are only using the element. No need to specify position and array. So that's another way to write this function. Of course, the whole signature of the function is element, position, array. Now, that's what a high order function is. It's just a function that takes another function. And in this case, we use this for each function to iterate over the array. Now, it's not the only function in array that takes this high is that is a high order function, and it's not the only one that takes the same type of function. Let me put another example of this. With arrays, we have also a bunch of other functions like filter, map, uh, reduce, uh, includes. You can find them all in the documentation. One of the most important ones are these two, filter and map. Right? Filter, filter will basically allow me to filter elements in an array. Uh, so when I filter, I keep the elements that, m that the filter returns true. When I do map, I can convert an array of something to an array of something else, right? There, so there is a very di diverse ways to use these functions. You should Google them. Um, I don't think we will have time for that. But let me put an example of filter and reduce. Let's say I want to I have the list of names, right? So we have John and Adam and Mary and Joseph and Vale. So we have a list of names and I want to filter I want to filter uh, I want to filter I want to keep the names that are smaller than smaller or equal to four characters, right? So I want to keep those names. I don't want any name that is longer than four characters, right? So I will use filter for that. This is an array, and I can do names.filter. Now remember, filter is a high order function. So the parameter of filter is a function. And it's a function with element, position, array. Now, the filter only says, if, if I return true in this function, I keep the element. If I return false, I reject the element. So I only keep in the ones that the size is four or less, right? So I'm saying return if the element.len is lower than or equal to four. Of course, I will have to short names. Okay, so now short names will be an array with only John, Adam, Mary, and Bob. Why? Because I filter based on that criteria. Only the ones that are lower or equal than four. That's my criteria for filtering. Right? If I say, okay, only the ones that are bigger than four, this will return an array with only Joseph because that's the only one that is bigger than four. You see where I'm going? So that's what filter does. It's really useful function. Okay? Let me give you another example of filter. If I want to remove an element of the array by the index, Right? Uh, let's say I want to remove um, 0, 1, 2, second. Let's say I want to remove the element at the second position, right? 
I have the position, so I can say return if the position is different than two. So for every other item in this array, I will return true, except for the one at two. That means that I will have an array that has John, Adam, Joseph, and Valen. Right, because I iterated through all of them. Of course, I got the element and the position. And I use the position to say, okay, if the position is not two, it's true. If it's two, then it's false. And that's why the one that two doesn't appear in the return. And that's another way to filter. And that's what filter is. It's basically filtering elements based on any criteria. You can use the value, you can use the position, you can use a combination of those. Okay? Cool. Questions about filter? Let's do an example with, with map. Now map, only these two, by the way, because the other ones are really complex. So for example, map is one of the most used functions that we will have in arrays. And it's because once we get to React, you will see that map is the function that we use to convert data that comes from a backend or whatever, and we convert that to an interface, right? And for that, we use map. So let me show you an example of map. Let's say I want the lengths of these words, right? Instead of showing John, Mary, Joseph, Valley, I would like the length or the size of these words. So I want an array, I want to convert my array of strings to an array of numbers with the length of those strings. So I do names.map and I do, well, element position array, right? This is the signature of that function. And I will return element.length. Now, length is an array of four, 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 six, four. Because ev for every item, I'm running this function, and whatever this function returns, that's what I'm using in the array, right? If I change this and I do A, what do you think will be my array? Sorry? No? Exactly. A. A. For every element, I'm returning A. It's five of them. What this function is doing is whatever this function returns, use that as the as the resulting value in the resulting array. If I'm returning a constant like a, that's what I get in the in the resulting array. A, 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 a. If I do a plus position, what do you think you will return? A zero, a one, a two, a three, oops, a four. Is whatever expression I'm returning from that function, that will be the new value. Yes, go ahead. Would the zeros be inside the quotes? Would the numbers be inside the quotes? Yeah, yeah, but because when you add a string with a number, that that's converted to a string. Okay. Yeah. So, it's like that. But if I do this, what do you think it will be? Just zero. Just it will be the number exactly. Zero. One. Two. I mean, you you get the point. Four. Because that's why I'm returning a number. Got it? Now, let's make it more interesting. And you will see where I'm going th with this in terms of interface. Because remember, this is a web development. So we are trying to build an interface. Let's say I have the names. And you're probably familiar with the list tag, right? The, oh, not this, uh, sorry. 
the tag for from HTML, the tag to make an order list like this, right? What is the tag that we use inside the OL? Uh, li, right? Yeah. So we have li, and then we put anything, and that's the item. And then we put at the end an slash OL. Now, if I have a list of names, and I want to render that list of names as li tags, how do I change this here? I can say, OK, li, oops. Well, I would use a, I would use backticks. Dollar element li backtick. Right? So I'm returning some HTML that I built right there. What do we return here? A string with li John. And then the second element is Eli Adam. And then the third is Eli Mary Joseph. And of course, Lali. You see? So that's why we use map a lot, because we have data that come from the server, that come from, I don't know, wherever. And then we turn that data using map into list of things, right? It could be a list of items, something as simple as li, but it could be a list of cards. It, like, for example, when you see, I don't know, YouTube, right? You have a list of videos. Every video has a set of data, right? It has the URL of the video. It has the the URL of the image. It has the name of the video. It has the duration. It has how many views, right? How can we encode that? We can encode that as an it's an array, right? It's an array of videos. But every video, so every element in the array is an object. And every object has the title of the video. I don't know. Uh, what is the first title? Sonos Ace something, something. And then the duration. Oh, duration is eight, eight hours. Maybe I have it here like this. Maybe I have how many minutes? Eight times 60. 60, 48, so 4,808 minutes, something like that. And then I have the likes. Oh, the likes is around 800,000. Oops. And then the URL of the video. Something, something, something. And then every element in this array is an object with a bunch of properties, right? And then I take map and I convert this array of data, in this case, video data, to a rendering of each one's car, right? And that's how, how that interfaces are built. So that's why map is so important, is because it's a, it's a function that allows you to convert from one thing to the other. By the way, there is a very nice meme about JavaScript array functions. Uh, well, you can find a cheat sheet. But it's an image that has that pretty much described. Uh, let me show you. Uh, so you see that you have find. We'll find you one. Finding this will give you the position. Actually, this is not very good. There is one with, well, these are some of them. Oh. <laughs> kind of, I don't know, it's kind of dumb, but you see you have an array of hamburgers, and if you convert every hamburger to a fry, then now you have an array of fries. Filter, you want to keep the fries, then that's what you keep. 
fine you want to keep the hamburger then you will find that uh, finding this will give you the position field never saw that before some it will check if all of them are uh, hamburgers every will check if every of them are so yeah it's a lot of functions that you can use in terms of arrays um, but that's the main one filter map uh, questions question 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 now there is another way to loop in in JavaScript and this is kind of not very common because it's kind of like uh, inherit from C and C++ and Java. It's the same loop. You probably, if you have familiarity with these languages, you've probably seen them before. And it's this, const i equals zero, i lower than, I don't know, 10, i plus, or you can say i equals i plus one. And then you can loop. Now, this is an unconstrained loop, right? Basically, you can loop through infinity if you want, uh, or you can loop through any size that you want, right? Um, it's not that it's, it's not bad. It's actually a way to loop. It's a valid way to loop. The thing is that we don't usually use it, right? Because you're not looping freely from 1 to 10. You're looping through arrays, and it's, there are better ways or more uh, easy to read ways to loop through arrays, right? If you want to loop through an array, you have three ways here. You have four off, you have four in, or you have four each. So it's kind of really uncommon to do four like this, right? Because this will take more, it's more versatile, but it's also a little bit harder to read at the end of the day. So this is another way to loop, of course, you will loop from zero until i, sorry, it will loop from zero, the first value, and i lower than 10. So as long as i is lower than 10, we will increase i every time. So if we console log i here, we will see in the in the terminal, we'll see zero, one, two, three, four, and up to 10, up to nine, sorry. Uh, but again, this is not very, like there are better ways to represent a looping in an array. Now the other the other way that we have, and this is also borrowed from other languages, is while. And this is certainly something that you will never see in coding, because it's even more dangerous than the previous one. Because especially this, right? You you came up like with something like this, then you have an infinite loop, and that basically breaks your breaks your browser your your because this is what work in the browser and i'm not sure that browsers have now protected against this mm -hmm. but we can try actually running? Yeah, we did a, we did a timeout. Yeah, some, some, time. <laughs> uh, you see that it took a second to, to remove the page. So yeah, don't, <laughs> right? Don't use while. It's really unpredictable, especially if you don't, you don't have a certainty mm -hmm. that the condition that you're putting here will ever stop, right? So don't use the while true. There is certain code, especially backend code, that you will see while true, especially the ones that are listening for events in the, in a, you know, a server that's listening for events. Those type of servers, if they are reading in JavaScript, they probably have a while true. I don't know if they, that's the best way, but again, don't avoid it, basically. It's in the language, just don't use it, right? Cool, that's all for, that's all for array and loops. We have a project, let me stop this right here.